Hello everyone and welcome to Spring Boot video on IntelliPath. In this video, we are going to learn about establishing connection with a database. Then we are going to learn about adding entity relationship. Then at the end, we are going to learn about the Spring Actuator. Before we head on to learn more about Spring Boot, do not forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell icon. So let's start with what is Spring Data JPA. But before that, there are a couple of terms that you need to understand. The first one is ORM. So ORM stands for Object Relational Mapping, which converts the database information into Java class, referred to as Entity. Additionally, ORM maintains the connection between the tables at the Entity level. The most well-known ORM frameworks for Java in the market are such like your Hibernate. Then there is the Java specification that outlines how to persist Java objects, which is known as Java Persistent API or JPA. It is viewed as a bridge connecting a relational database system with an objected oriented paradigm. The typical JA implementation is with Hibernate, which is also a part of Java framework such as Spring. JPA cannot be utilized alone. Hibernate implementation is always required. So let's start with what is Spring Data JPA? As prior, we have understood about what is JPA. Basically, JPA is a standard for creating the persistent layer, as we have seen before. And Spring Data JPA is a side project of the Spring framework that enables the integration between Spring applications and JPA. An abstraction called Spring Data JPA makes it simple to interact with the default JPA provider like Hibernate. With regard to creating data access repositories quickly, Spring Data JPA offers a set of interfaces. Prior to the Spring Data JPA, we had to create implementations for each and every DAO's CRUD methods. But then came the Spring Data JPA, which hides it from the developer and in the background offers implementation for the fundamental CRUD methods. This saves developers a lot of boilerplate code and increases productivity. We still have an option to use HQL custom methods and criteria and etc. and many more. Now let's go into the hands-on part and let's create a new project. So I have opened my STS ID and now I want to look at my pom.xml file. So when the file opens, we are going to see we are just using the Spring Startup Web Dependencies. Okay. But we need a couple of more dependencies apart from this in order to connect to the Spring Data JPA. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. Okay. And uh, this will be our final project, which is the course API. And then next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click all over here. Okay. Then next comes the Spring Startup project. So we are going to create the Spring Startup project. Just click on it. Okay. And this will be our course API data. So instead of one, we can write course API data. This will be the Maven project. Okay. And uh, description is Spring Boot. You can type data. So as you can see in the description, what we can write all over here is that demo project for Spring Boot data JP or Spring Boot data API or course. Now we are set. Just click the next and then we are going to have some dependencies installed. Let's check what are the dependencies that we will be needing. So we will be using the Spring Web starter dependency. Just click on the Spring Web. Okay. It's added. Now and next I want to add the SQL part. Okay. For the same purpose we will be using the Spring Data JPA. And we need some database so that it can interact with the Spring Data JP. So as you can see all over here, there will be a Derby server. So this is an embedded server, basically a database server. And it uses, you know, its embedded server to, you know, apply 
This is an Apache Derby database which has an embedded database server and we will be connecting it to our JPA so that it uses as you can click it shows that an open source relational database implemented entirely in Java. So what it does is it offers it adds you know its database to the class path and for the same purposes it's not preferred to exactly do in the production environment but for testing the development process you can use this on your local environment which is the Apache Derby database. I'm going to right click all over here and add it okay and click finish on it. Now let's give a time to build our pom.xml file. Now the spring has added the required maven dependencies. Now let's check our pom.xml file. Just right click on this and you can see we'll have our required dependencies which is the spring starter data GPA and we also have the spring starter web dependencies as we have done it earlier. Then we have the Apache Derby which is an additional dependency which we have which we are going to use it for our database purposes and then we have the test which is also fine to test our project and next is this all and we have the maven plugin. Now just close this and go on the source.main.java file and as you can see in the course API data application.java file we have our main file. Now what we have to do all over here is now in our main file what we are going to do is we are going to write all over here as at the rate spring application. So as you can see I have annotated all over here with spring boot application. Now just right click on this and import our package. So this is all done. Now the next thing is that we have to figure it out that we don't have the extra work that we have did in our earlier project in which we had the controller class of topic then we had the business service class then we have the topic class. So what I'm going to do all over there so we'll go on the course API package okay and in the course API package what we are going to do is we are going to copy this entire package which is basically our com.example.demo topic okay so just right click all over here and copy this. Now what you're going to do all over there is go on this package which is the course API data and paste it. So now all the extra work that we have done in our earlier project is already present in our data. No extra configuration or no any hard coded configuration you have to do. The only configuration we have to figure it out is adding these things to the required class paths. So the automatically the class path scan will happen and it will be very easy for you. Now what I'm going to do all over there is. So after pasting it all over here in our course API data package. Now I'm going to close this package which is present all over here. Okay just click on this. Okay. Now we are in this our package and we have the com.example.demo topic files. What we are going to do is we are going to make some changes in the topic service class. So just open it. So as you can see we have some hard coded topics present all over here in our topic list. So what we are going to do basically is we are going to connect it with the spring data GPA. But the question is how we are going to add this to our spring data GPA. So as you can see in our pom.xml we had the earlier in which we had it the spring data starter JPA and we also had the Apache Derby configuration. Now in order to add this what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in our topic.java file and as you can see these are the instances which I want to save it in our database. But the question is how you are going to do it. So what we can do it we have some another annotation all over here which is basically called the entity annotation. So write entity entity okay. So you can import it all over here import entity from Jakarta persistence entity. So now whenever spring sees this annotation it is going to tell that there are some member variables present in this database. So what it means is basically in your database your ID instance name and course info will be the columns. 
the values will be in the required rows. So this is all we have to do but just by putting a simple annotation of the entity. So these columns will be the string id, name and the course info. And the most important thing that we have to figure it out all over here is that what will be the primary key in our relationship model. So you have guessed it right, it will be the string id. So in order to do it, what you have to do it all over here, we have one more annotation that is id annotation. So just click this and you can import it from jakarta.persistence package and we have perfectly imported our id from this package and we have told our class that this is an entity class which has the entity object relational model and it has these member instances which is string id name and the course info and we have made string id as our primary key now we are set to go so this is all the configuration that we have to do to make this as an entity class okay now we can see in the topic service class okay that we have this hard coded things and we have to make this service class get connected to the spring data gpa for the same purpose we need to create one more repository now as you can see in the last part what we did we had all those http verbs like post put get and delete to perform the crud operation but in this what i want to do we were thinking of some data service that could be present so that we could update the topic read the topic and we could delete those topics now for the same purposes what we can do all over here is we are going to go into the com.example.demo topic and we are going to create a new class this we can name it as topic repository topic repository now just click on the finish. So this is our topic repository class. Now in this topic repository class, what we have to figure it out, how we are going to create those methods which are going to perform the CRUD operations. Just like get all topics, you know, get topic with particular string id as a parameter, then update the topic with topic instance t and delete the topic with a particular string id. So what Spring Data GPA team has done, they have provided an out of box solution all over here. So what we have to do is, we have to delete this, okay. We don't have to do all these things. As you can see in our topic class, we have all this entity and this as ID and this all the member instances of the topic class. So what we have to do basically is that in our topic.repository.java, there is some one more annotation that we have to do and there is one thing with Spring Data JPA tells that tells that that you have the particular instances like you have this id, name and the course info and this is all the constructor and this is all the methods that you have created all over here. So we have the standard CRUD methods available so what you can do is you can make this class as an interface okay. so and you can extend it to the CRUD repository from where you could get of those generic methods of the CRUD operations. So what we can do all over here is, so I have made this class as an interface. Now the next thing what I will do it all over here is, I am going to extend it to the CRUD repository okay, and which is provided by the Spring Data JP. And this CRUD repository accepts a generic type such as we would have a topic and the parameter as string. Now you can import this CRUD repository from the Spring Data repository and you would have all those CRUD methods like update, read, create and delete. So it will be very easy for you. And you don't have to do anything extra. You don't have to hard code any methods. Now let's discuss the Spring Boot Actuator. Do you know friends that developing and managing an application are the two most important aspects of the application's life cycle. It is very crucial 
to know what's going on beneath the application. And also when we push the application on production, managing it gradually becomes critically important. Therefore, it is always recommended to monitor the application both while at the development phase and at the production phase. The advantages that we can get by monitoring and managing the application are that it increases the customer satisfaction. Then it reduces the downtime. Also, it helps us to boost the productivity and it improves the cybersecurity management. It also increases the conversion rate. And with the help of Spring Boot Actuator, we can achieve all of these advantages. Spring Boot's Actuator dependency is used to monitor and manage the Spring Web applications. We can use it to monitor and manage the application with the help of HTTP endpoints or with the help of JMX. That was a little bit short intro about Spring Boot Actuator. So that was all for today's session. And thank you very much for watching this video. Just a quick info guys. IntelliPath provides Java certification online training mentored by industry experts. The course link of which is given in the description below.